All right, so I'm outside of a 2019 Honda Civic. This is the EX model. Uh, this is a G in blue with a black interior. Uh, we've tinted the outside. Outside of that, this is a stock vehicle, just so you can get an idea for what the wheels, trim, everything looks like on the vehicle. Uh, so this is just how the car comes standard. Uh, I'm going to start you at the back of the car, but the first thing I want to show you is the key. So the car does have a remote start to use it. You always got to press the lock button first to make sure the doors are locked, then press and hold the remote start button for a couple seconds, and it'll fire on for you. It'll usually throw some indicators there. Now my vehicle is on. Uh, to turn it off, I can press the unlock button and then press the remote start button, and that'll turn the vehicle off. So that's how a remote start works on this vehicle. All right, so the first thing I want to do is pop open the trunk and show you a couple things. So in the back, I do have my floor mats. So those are right there, come standard in the car. Below that, you're going to see my spare and all my accessories needed for the vehicle. Uh, in the back, I do have a 60-40 split, so I can adjust and open and lay those down if I absolutely need to. So that's how I would do so. Now, moving out of the back seat and into the second row, I will point out your gas cap. It's connected to your door locks, so if the car is unlocked, I can open this up. It is a capless, so it's kind of nice in the sense that I don't have to worry about not putting that on tight enough and it's setting off the check engine light for me. So, connected to your door locks, just keep that in mind. You don't have like a pull tab up in the front of the car anymore. So, let's make sure all the doors are unlocked here, and we'll hop into the back seat and show you some stuff. So, black interior. This is a cloth finish on this vehicle. The EX only comes in cloth. Uh, it does have a fold down back seat, so you've got some cup holders here, uh, some storage over there in the sides of the doors. You can put water bottles in too. It's a nice neoprene finish, so it's actually pretty nice material compared to some previous generations. Uh, and then it does have a racing stripe finish in the seats, and I'll show you that here more in a second. So graphite finish look going here. Uh, it's plastic, and then and then a cloth finish on the the, uh, the sides of the doors. Now it is a smart key entry, so I can lock the doors using the little black button right there when I'm getting out. To open the door, I just put my hand on the door handle, it unlocks for me. The default setting on this car is to just open that one door when I do it, but you can set it to unlock all of them with the smart key entry setup. And I'll show you where that's at here momentarily. Now this car does have a powered seat, uh, so you do have that in the EX model. Your passenger side will not be powered though, so keep that in mind. Uh, over here on the door, I have my controls for my windows, uh, auto up and down on my passenger and driver side, my window locks, my door locks, and my mirror controls. If I need to pop the trunk, it's right there. My hood release is going to be right down here, so just some things I can point out. So let's crank the car up and show you a couple other things. So it's a push button start, so you just throw your foot on the brake and press the start button. If you do not throw your foot on the brake, it's like turning the keys backwards and turning on accessory mode in a vehicle. So that's how that works. Now over here on the dash, there's going to be three different buttons I can get in here too, and I'll tell you what they are. The first one is this bottom left one, and that's um, road departure mitigation. You can tell it's on by that LED right there. What road departure mitigation is, is in the event that I start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert, and from that audible alert, what it will do is it will shake the wheel additionally too. Now you can change those settings if you don't want it to do one of those in particular, but that's what the default is. Now above that, you'll see a picture of a car looking like it's gonna land on another car. That's my Ford collision braking system. So collision mitigation braking, if you want the technical term. Also part of Honda sensing. So if it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, first thing it'll do is give me an audible alert and flash in the dash to alert me here. And then secondarily, it will start to apply the brakes to help prevent this accident. Now next to that button is gonna be my vehicle stability assist. This works with my traction control. So in the event that I go into a skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting the better traction and try to correct from that standpoint. Now let's move up onto the steering wheel. So on your left side, I've got my Bluetooth control, so to answer a call, to hang up or go back, and then my voice command button. My voice command button will work with the prompts via uh, the Honda voice setup, which is what I just threw on. Like so I'm going to back out of that real quick. It'll also work if I'm using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which from the home screen, if you've plugged your phone into the USB, it'll light up right there and let you know if Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is working. So that's what that is. Now the I button right here is going to toggle through my menus up here. So whether I want to see tripometer information, you know, my current previous trips and my range, how many miles I'm on this tank of gas kind of stuff. If I want torque management things right here. If I want to jump over to my oil life, I can get that right here. Uh, my audio, what's available to me. If I press up, it'll allow me to change between those. So whether it's Bluetooth, Sirius XM, which you get for three months for free, AM, FM, if I had a USB hooked up, uh, you know, it'll just keep on going through my, my different options. My volume controls are right here, so my plus and minus. And then you saw what I was using this for to adjust. So let's say I have uh, the stereo pulled up. So if I'm jumping over to my audio, 
All right, so I have uh, XM running right now. If I press the left or the right button here, it'll switch between my favorites, so you'll see it start to toggle through there and jump between those stations. So that's just what this will do additionally, or if I'm listening to audio via Spotify or something downloaded or on the USB, it's allow me to jump tracks. So that's how that works. Now on the right side of your stinging wheels, where some of the additional uh, Honda sensing suite is gonna live. So the first thing you'd wanna do is hit your main button. If your main button is on already, it'll stay on. And the way to tell if it's on is you'll see ACC and LKS, which is right there. ACC stands for Adaptive Cruise Control, LKS stands for Lane Keep Assist. So Lane Keep Assist is the first one I wanna to touch on. And that's using this button right here. If I press this button, you're gonna see some dotted lines appear there. Uh, anytime I'm going over 45 miles an hour, there's a camera that is up in this black box that will look to read the lines on the road. Once it picks them up, those lines will fill in solid. Now that it's reading, if I start to drift out of my lane, it'll actually correct for me and keep me centered. Now, if I throw my blinker on, it's absolutely gonna recognize that I mean to get over and it's gonna allow me. Now, even if I don't throw my blinker on, I can overpower this system. It's not, you know, it's not abrasive or anything like that. It's just there to keep you from drifting into a car. So that's the purpose of it in case you were distracted. Now the second feature is adaptive cruise control. So once I would get up to the speed that I want to set, I would press the set. From there, uh, I would see my speed where it says ACC off because I'm not moving. And then I can select the distance it's going to keep between me and the car in front of me, no matter what my speed is. So the more boxes, the more space it keeps. So what that means is if I set it to 65 and I've got all these boxes here, and I'm turning those boxes on this button right here just so you know, that if the car in front of me slows down to 55, my car is gonna keep that designated spacing I set with those boxes and slow down with him. When I get out from behind him, it'll take me back up to my designated speed. Now let's say you're thinking to yourself, I really just want classic cruise control, I don't need all that, no big deal. Just press and hold this button right here for a couple seconds, bang, cruise mode selected, now you're just classic cruise. You wanna switch back, same thing again, press and hold that, now I'm back to adaptive cruise control. So that's how to toggle between the two. Now my left blinker stock over here, I've got my auto on off headlights, and my fog light control, so off and on. And then over here on the other side, I've got my windshield wiper control. So pull down to set them, right? Pretty easy to understand. Now moving over to the touch screen in the vehicle, I'll point out, um, let's start at the home button show you some different options. So first I'll show you my audio options. So if I touch my source button, this is gonna pull up all my different options for the vehicle. I've got FM, I've got AM, I've got 90 days of satellite for free, so three months. I've got USBs that I can plug into. The USB is actually right down below here, and you can see I have a cord that's ran up here for me. That's something Honda's provided. And then secondarily, I have a, another USB down here in the center console. So I can plug like a thumb drive into that and have a lot of music stored. Uh, an iPod, anything with an iPod, pretty much plug in and work with this car. Uh, Bluetooth, if I want to wirelessly connect up to my iPod, my iPhone, my Android-based phone, whatever it may be. Uh, Pandora compatibility just allows me to wirelessly connect up through Pandora and be able to see my stations and different stuff on the screen. I typically like to use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, which would be from here. You just have to plug into that USB, which is right down here and this will light up and let you know Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. If you're an Android-based user, keep in mind you do need to download Android Auto. Uh, but that'll give you access to your maps, your music, your, your navigation, so Google Maps, Waze, Apple Maps if you're an Apple user, so all these options, right? Uh, along with Spotify, Pandora, WhatsApp, a lot of different apps, so really cool, definitely worth using. Keep that in mind, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is available in this vehicle. Um, now, under info, this is where you can get to things like your tripometer information, um, or if you just wanted to clock and screen saver up here. So same info I have here, if I toggle through with the menus over here using the I button, I can jump over to and I can have that same info right here. So just depends, depends on what kind of trip you're taking and what kind of presentation you want and where. Uh, from there, I'm gonna move down Honda Link. So Honda Link is set up to give you uh, maintenance reminders and recall notices. Um, additionally, I will tell you Honda Link does some cool stuff. So in the event that I get into a, an accident and my airbags deploy, it can call first to me. If I don't answer in the call, it can call 911 for me. It's 100% free, it works a lot like OnStar, uh, except there's no subscription charge. So Honda Link, cool, keep in mind. Uh, phone, if I wanna connect up my first phone to the car, I just press that and it'll start me through the prompts. Would you like to add a phone? Yes, I would, and then I can search for it. Now let's say uh, you're adding a secondary phone. So you can see Robert's phone was already connected to this car. So I wanna go add a second phone to the car now. Uh, so from here, I would go to Bluetooth. And then from there, I want to go to the device list because I want to add a device to that list. Now at the bottom of the screen, you'll see add Bluetooth device. And now it would allow me to search uh, and add that, that third or fourth or fifth, whatever amount of phones or devices I want to connect to the car. Uh, so under settings, some additional stuff I will show you. If you go to vehicle right here, there's some really cool stuff in here. So under door and window, 
this is where you can get to see your door lock settings. So auto door lock right here, this very first one, this is just letting you know that when you hit 10 miles an hour, it will automatically lock the doors for you. So that's your default setting and some options you can change it to. Back out of that. Auto door unlock. So the way the car's set up right now is when I hit, uh, or excuse me, when I open my driver's side door, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. And there's some different options you can change that to as, as well. Now at the very bottom of the screen, you're gonna see walk away auto lock. This is a really cool feature. So what it's designed for is if it's on, which that is not the default setting, off is the default setting for this. So if you get in your car and you, and you, you don't have it, it's probably because it's not turned on. But when it is on, if I get out of my car, get 10 feet from it, it will automatically lock the doors, assuming the key is not in the vehicle. So this is fantastic if you get halfway in the grocery store, you're that person who goes, uh, I don't remember if I locked it or not. You should probably turn this feature on. So just some cool features that you can play with. Additionally, back under the vehicle settings, which is where I'm at right now, uh, there are a lot of other stuff you can play with under lighting, uh, keyless access setup. I was telling you earlier uh, where I could set it to where when I touch the door handle, it would unlock just the driver's side door. I can change that to all the doors. So just some other features you can play with. If you have questions about this stuff, reach out. Uh, so that's kind of a rundown of the touchscreen. It does have a volume knob. I can turn things on and off as far as my audio power uh, right there. Uh, my climate control, I can control everything from buttons and knobs here. Right now, I don't have it pulled up on the screen, but you can see my temperatures up here. Uh, and I can sync them both using this button, and now they're all working off my side. If I want to pull everything up on the screen, I absolutely can. So AC, where the air is going and how much air. Uh, so different ways you can do the same things. Now, the EX model is the first model you'll find heated seats in. And I have controls right here for both sides with three different settings. So kind of cool. Um, down below that, my shifter. Uh, my parking brake is electronic, so to use it, I put my foot on the brake, I lift up to set it. You can see it's already on right now, the red LED is letting me know. To release it, I put my foot on the brake and press down, and now it's released. Now above that is brake hold, and to show you how brake hold works, I need to put my seatbelt on here first, because it is a requirement of this feature. So what this is designed for, is if I turn the brake hold button on, first it'll alert me there, and then it's going to show me over here that it's remaining on. If I move the car into drive, I can let my foot off the brake and the car isn't moving while we're in drive. So this is for like stop and go traffic. So let's say I move five feet forward. So now I'm moving, I come to a stop. I'm at a complete stop, the car's still in drive. My foot, I'm now releasing it from the brake, I'm not moving. So this is great if you're in like stop and go traffic and you're moving every five feet. It just allows you to release your leg and relax a little bit, so that's the purpose of this. So while we're talking about the shifter, I'm gonna throw it in reverse and show you your backup camera. I've got three different views here. So I've got a wide angle view, standard backup camera and then one aim straight down so if I'm backing up to another car or garage anything like that I can see exactly where I'm getting and how close I'm getting to another vehicle so that's what the purpose of this is so that way you can see how that works so we'll switch off of that so we understand brake hold we went through the parking brake econ so if I press the econ button you're gonna see a green leaf appear up there and there what the econ button does is it improves gas mileage of the car, but in doing so, you're gonna give up a couple things. You're gonna give up some of the AC power, as far as your air conditioner, and you're giving up some of the acceleration on the car. But in doing so, you're getting better gas mileage. So if you're a conservative driver, leave it on, you'll never know the difference. If you feel like you notice a difference when it's on when you're driving, turn it on and off as you go. There's no requirement that you have to be at a stop or anything specific. You can just click it on, click it off, you're good to go either way. So my center console is cloth covered and then it is sliding and, and then it does throw back. Uh, I've got a deep well if I wanna go with like a big water bottle. I've got two smaller ones if I wanna go with classic drinks, uh, change holder and then some additional storage back there. Uh, and then this does slide back forward. So center console is pretty standard setup. Uh, above me I do have a moon roof to send it back. Pull one trigger, it'll send it all the way back for me and open it up. Uh, I'm gonna send it back for it, but a cool trick you can do if you push directly up on it, not only will it close it, but then it'll go into the other mode it offers. It'll crack it. Uh, and then to close it completely, just press forward, and now it's closed. Um, so that's kind of a quick rundown of this car. It is a cloth interior. A lot of people end up moving to this vehicle uh, because they want this camera off the right side. So anytime you turn your right blinker on, it throws a camera on. Uh, this is called Honda Lane Watch. So the red line is the end of my car. If we were going down the highway, red to orange would be a car link, orange to orange would be a car link. I don't have to turn the blinker on to do it. I can press that button right on the tip and turn it on and off. So if I heard a motorcycle, I could throw it on and see if he was sitting back there in my blind spot. Purpose of this camera is to avoid from me having to look over my shoulder and away from the road uh, and then worry about hitting another car. Mind you, I do have the Ford Collision braking system that you saw right there and I was explaining it, but this is just some additional help for me, right? So that's what this camera's purpose is. So a lot of people end up moving up to this car because they want Apple CarPlay, maybe they want a powered seat, uh, maybe they want uh, that camera off the right side, uh, maybe they want a little bit different stereo system with the tweeters, the setup down below, uh, and then the speakers in the back additionally too. 
So a lot of different things can move people from maybe a Sport to an EX. Maybe they want the heated seats, uh, but just some different things to keep in mind when you're considering this car or if you've already purchased it, a nice refresh over what you have. If you have any questions, feel free to call me, 512-443-4300 and ask for Justin. You can always comment on the YouTube video. I'm pretty good about checking those and getting back to everybody. Um, or you can email me, the letter J, and then Fuller, F-U-L-L-E-R, at howdyhonda.com. Thank you much.